Today's revelation that there are 12 new confirmed coronavirus cases brings the total number in the UK to 35. Three of the new patients are close contacts of the first known COVID-19 case to be transmitted within the UK by the Surrey resident in Hazelmere. Another of the new patients is from Essex, and they also have not travelled to an affected area outside the UK. The eight remaining new cases are from London, West Yorkshire, Greater Manchester, Hertfordshire and Gloucestershire. Six of those eight people had recently travelled from Italy, while two had come in from Iran. The Prime Minister will chair an emergency COBRA meeting tomorrow, and the government is expected to release more details of contingency plans in the next few days. Here's Aisha Tal. 12 new patients. It's the biggest jump in virus cases in a single day. And at this lab that does all the testing, the Prime Minister wants to show the government is on top of it. As you know, we found about 35 people in this country uh, have or have had uh, the illness. And clearly there may be more, there may be that, that is likely now to, to spread a bit more. And uh, it's vital, therefore, that people understand that we do have a great plan, a plan to tackle the spread of coronavirus. And I am very, very confident that in the NHS, we have the professionals who will uh, be well able to, to cope with it. Most of the patients had recently traveled to affected areas or were in contact with someone that had. But in two cases, it seems the patients had not left the country and could have caught the virus here in the UK. Before the spike of cases was announced, I asked the health secretary about the NHS's ability to deal with the virus. It's one of the busiest periods of the year. Is the NHS ready for a big outbreak? Well, of course, like the rest of government, the NHS has got very serious plans in place. At the moment, in this contained phase, when the, the number of cases is relatively no, low, the NHS is doing a brilliant job, but we have plans in place to scale up the response from the NHS. Everybody can play their part. We have a duty in government to keep people safe, but everybody has a duty to do what they can. Washing your hands, making sure that if you have a cough or a sneeze that you catch it, and following the advice of clinicians and the public health advice. At this school, where a staff member has tested positive, they've closed for a deep clean. But this parent says the government must do more. If they want to stop the virus from spreading, they should be making sure that people are isolated. Children at both schools and parents should be isolated for at least two weeks. Worldwide, the number of infections is over 87,000, and nearly 3,000 people have died. The first deaths in Australia, Thailand and America have been reported. In the country at the centre of the worst outbreak in Europe, Italy, cases have reached over a thousand. Pews stood empty as Sunday services in churches were cancelled here in Milan and in Venice, gondolas stayed docked on the side of the bank. Amid the coronavirus outbreak in the country, the Pope told pilgrims gathered today that he's cancelling his week-long spiritual retreat due to illness. <coughs> A Vatican spokesperson said it's a slight illness without going into further details. In France, where the latest figures released show 100 people have the virus, they've banned large gatherings of over 5,000 people. At the Louvre, one of the most iconic places in Paris, confused visitors stood outside. Inside, staff were reportedly talking about new measures to protect workers from catching the virus. But even though the Paris half marathon was cancelled, these runners still figured out a way to take part, organising in smaller groups on social media to get their miles in. Here, the government hasn't taken steps to ban public gatherings or isolate whole communities. But with the biggest rise in cases so far, we may soon be entering a new phase where such extraordinary measures are considered. Well, earlier I spoke to the SNP politician Jean Freeman, who is Scotland's health secretary, and I began by asking her what emergency measures could be put in place to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. We have the capacity to look at whether or not we uh, prevent large gatherings, for example, sporting events, mm. uh, concerts or whatever. And how uh, close so we, are we to doing that, for instance? Because in France well, they've already uh, you know, banned gatherings of people over 5,000. Yes, I understand that. Of course, we have to be proportionate. And in Scotland, at this point, we have no positive case. 
we are ready to take those steps if we need to. Could one of those steps be, according to Matt Hancock, they're considering this down here in England, um, asking retired GPs to come back and work and help out the general population? So that is part of resilience plans that you would sensibly have in place on the basis that if a large number of the population were affected by this virus and therefore were either being cared for in healthcare facilities or were self-isolating at home, remembering that it doesn't affect everyone to the same degree, then you will be losing staff uh, from our health service as well as uh, potentially from other services. In those instances, you then look to see where else can you secure that expertise and uh, training. And you think you can persuade them to do that? I, what, what I do know, I'm sure NHS Scotland staff are no different from uh, across the country, is that all of our NHS staff will do everything that they need to do in order to care for patients. That includes staff, whether or not they're retired, doesn't mm -hmm. really matter. Um, their dedication, their vocation in life is to care for uh, other human beings for their fellow citizens. And so I am confident that if that was required, then people would respond positively to that. I guess what I'm trying to get at here is that if we look around the world, some, some fairly drastic measures are already in place. In Japan, they have shut down all schools until the end of April with several hundred cases of the coronavirus and a, and a relatively small number of deaths. In France, they've banned gatherings of people over, uh, you know, over 5,000 people. You know, when do we reach that stage here and how quickly can that come before we take these same sort of drastic measures in this country? So it, it's, in a sense, almost impossible to answer with absolute certainty that question because it needs to be about, as I've said already, what the scientific and clinical advice is. And that is in part determined by the nature of the transmission of the disease and also the speed of its spread, how successful we are in managing to contain it. So that is uh, it's constantly reviewed. It will be looked at again on Monday when COBRA meets and uh, I and uh, others from the Scottish Government, including our First Minister, will be part of that. That will be constantly reviewed in order to get the best clinical advice and be able to make those decisions. Jean Freeman, thank you for your time. Thank you.